a little bit lower level. Sorry, sorry guys. Yeah, no <laughs> worries. No, no worries. Yeah, cool. I just had to dismiss <laughs> the thing. But yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, sorry. But yeah, the, the IOB uh, working group is you know extending on sticks, leveraging you know the capability that's in six two dot one to build an extension uh, onto the you know schema for some other thing. In this case, behavior. Like, what what are the missing attributes for behavior to be able to define that and you know, be able to pass around behaviors to look for, you know, writer attack stuff, user behaviors, you know, whatever. Um, right. And so, yeah, they've been, they've, this is a continuation uh, from IACD mm -hmm. um, and work that was going on there with John Hopkins. Uh, the, the project was defunded from the U.S. government, but work has continued by various organizations you know uh including johns hopkins and they you know brought the project here to kind of move it out from under that umbrella under our umbrella okay. uh, and continue the work the the grand scheme is that we eventually stitch these different working groups together you know the goal is um interoperability between all these things and, and the individual projects are like you know really low level this part of the cybersecurity data picture you know this is a format the ontology theoretically is kind of a governance umbrella that organizes all of the different knowledge mm -hmm. you know all the the different things that things can see know and do basically mm -hmm. um and, and you know and this is just an extension of that so yeah trying to long turn answer just to trying to yeah get you up to speed more generally but um, yeah. appreciate that <laughs> this vote itself is really it's just a go ahead it, yeah and and, and maybe gotcha. just to add um uh so if if they were to produce a specification then the pgb needs to vote on you know approving that um if if this group or this project uh, were to do that. And also there's the technical steering committee, um, uh, which is um, uh, uh, appointed by the uh, by the PGB, but they kind of do the more day to day to day technical governance, I guess. and and um, uh, every sub project should have like a delegate to the P uh, to the TSC. So if, you know, if this is approved, the IOB, Charlie Frick, who works for Johns Hopkins, he um, already volunteered, you know, to be joining the TSC mm -hmm. um, and report back and things like that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thank you both for, for the info. Again, sorry to be you know, the new guy, but uh, I'm going to be that for, I'll play that card for a little while longer until I kind of get up to speed. <laughs> but, uh, no, no, it's good. Please it's good do. for all of us, I think. <laughs> Um, you know, one other thing is that, you know, anybody, obviously the members of OCA, you know, like yourself, um, if you see a project that, wow, this is interesting and could be related to this thing that we're doing at SAIC, then you can, you know, bring people in, insert yourself into that project, take part, participate. Um, you know, I'm constantly thinking about like, you know, how do I, how is there something related to Tenzir um, and that we can contribute to and also benefit from and, and share this collaborative, open approach to doing cybersecurity. And, you know, the more we do that, the more these things get stitched together. Um, and I hate to say it, but like, you know, becoming the true open, you know, standards-based XDR, uh, mm -hmm. To use an overused thing but <laughs> i think that's legit legitimately what it would be um so you know keep an eye out for things and you know enter yourself in anywhere of interest okay okay well i don't want to monopolize the whole conversation so i'll, I'll shut up let you guys yeah. do your business but thank you very much no i mean I, I think it's kind of a general discussion um like we don't have a gavel or anything so uh, I guess one of the other topics was the cybersecurity automation workshops. Uh, that's bounced around a little bit, but the idea um, is to 
take something that Duncan has been organizing between um, industry and various end users of things and bringing together kind of some of these open standards projects into an open forum. Uh, it's kind of a combination of things outside of OCA, like OpenC2, um, you know, some of the other work that's going on, cacao, uh, et cetera, but maybe bringing that under the OCA umbrella. And then I think the idea would be that we take on the burden of organizing that potentially coming out of our marketing budget um, and, you know, kind of taking that over. I think it kind of crosses over with um, the conference that Oasis does. Was it borderless cyber? Um, you know, I don't know how those things are related to that. I don't have a strong... I. I I'm supportive of the work. I, I don't know, but I think somebody with the highest interest has to take some ownership of making that happen. I don't, I'm, I haven't been too close to it. So I don't know that we solved that. It's one of the things Duncan wanted to bring up, but I think maybe it, that needs to get fleshed out further and asynchronously. Was there any, Claudia, do you know if there's any action on that? Um, no, I I only know of the email exchanges right on the list and people keep like were commenting on that, but I haven't spoken to Duncan yet. Um, uh, maybe he was also asking for Jane's input, I think. I'm not 100% sure now, to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know when he, when is he on vacation? <laughs> I think now. Oh, he's already in Antarctica. Oh no. Uh, oh no, no, no. That's that's in December. <laughs> later. He's, yeah. He's guest lecturing at a class somewhere ah, okay, today. Okay. All right. Uh, but yeah. I will uh I will contact him and follow up on that and see. Okay. Um Claudia, do you know anything about uh Black Hat EU? I haven't mm. been on the marketing calls. Um, no, um, that's Jane's uh, domain. I and I we had we haven't had so usually we have like a a sync between the marketing event team and I've usually joined that call for a bit. But since Jane was at um, All Things Open um, this week, uh, we didn't have that call this week, so I don't know if there's an update. She's also F FTO today um i will or maybe what do you have an exact question if there's a marketing barter or what's the question i i, I can reach out to I... them i just wasn't sure if you're aware of the plans i know from oh. jane that they uh, black hat eu did give oca a um sponsorship like a, a free sponsorship so yeah oca will have a booth there Oh, okay. Um, and when is that? December, first week of December. I think it's December oh, okay. 5th. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you're you going to to be there or? I'll be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I want to, you know, any other PGB members that uh, um, want to be there, I think we get, you know, some number of free like expo passes for people who want to come hang out at the booth and try okay. and recruit and tell people what we're doing. But I so plan on being there. Maybe you need, yeah. Is there anything I should do? Should I? Uh, no, I'll, I'll follow up. With Jane? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because she if she did the marketing butter, she has all the details. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. I'm just trying to think of all the things we could discuss. You know, I think the, the votes, the formal thing, that's underway. Um, the thing with Duncan and, and the cybersecurity automation workshop, I think we let that bounce back and forth a little bit more. And then, and, uh, and then there's the governance um, Google Doc with, and I saw that a couple of, of the PGB members um, left comments and reviewed this, but I, I guess maybe, maybe it's the ball is um, on our side and chat needs to consolidate that and, and come up with a proposal. 
or is there anyone on this call who hasn't had a chance or didn't get access to the Google Doc and still needs to wants to have a look? So this is about the governance MD um, um, document and updates to it. Well, I, I think I yeah. put mine in and, and relayed that back to you, I believe, Claudia, if I'm on the yeah. same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think I'm good. M Matthew, did you have any, did you have a chance to look at that? Um, I think I looked at it and it wasn't really relevant to me. So Okay, all right. On. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Paige, I don't know if, um, do you, will you be sitting in regularly uh, instead of Brad because he's in a div like a difficult time zone, let's say, for these meetings anyway. Yeah, I'm usually just sitting in to make sure I catch everything. He's pretty good at picking up the, the email calls. Okay, cool. But I'll make sure that, that he has access and, and gets everything. Right, okay, thank you. Let me know if there's anything, like if, you know, or he'll reach out anyway. <laughs> yeah, he's actually going to be in the States next week so we'll catch up on a lot of this stuff i'm actually emailing him right now about getting someone from our team to black hat europe if we can but yes i will um i generally just relay stuff over to him okay cool thank you so much um so i think for on this i think yeah i think chat needs to kind of consolidate all the comments and changes and and then we can have a proposal that can be voted upon I guess. Yeah, I, I could take one more pass at it after it's kind of consolidated, but okay. it, took, it seemed pretty, you know, I don't know, formal stuff. Duncan, yeah. somebody else is going to have a stronger opinion about that than I do. <laughs> I called out a couple of things, but um, yeah. And then, um, but that's something that was only for, for now, only sent to the chairs, to Mark and Jason. Um, oh, okay. The new standing rules. Um, so the there, there's an addition to the open project rules that allows um, our uh, uh, PGBs to change um, uh, att like att attendance rules so that people, if people, you know, if there's PGB members who either can't make it to most of the calls or don't want to make it to most of the calls and want to become non-voting PGB members as to, to not block quorums for important mm -hmm. votes that's something that can now be adopted and we've already the um another of our open projects that has a fairly large pgb and had had similar issues that there weren't, weren't enough people voting um and that was blocking some some progress um they already adopted that via some uh, and 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 um chat proposed a way the similar way to move forward for OCA if, if you care to do that. And so Mark, um, I can share it with the whole group. I don't like, it's not, it's not like. Yeah, um, I, I think if, most people won't have an opinion about it. We, you know, I think everybody tr very much trusts Oasis on this expertise and most of it's, yeah. So I think like uh, we need to know if we should, move forward with that and and kind of with the proposed um, process to adopt those new standing rules and then you need to vote on it anyway so do we put out a ballot or does it need to be a like, um i think quorum? i'm trying to remember so the, so the so i think the way we did it with eea was we um there were two or three pull requests to the um, so as to document that on GitHub to the go governance um, mm -hmm. file, and then there was a ballot um, to you know to a, like everyone had time to review these pull requests, but then there's a ballot um, to say yes or no or abstain on those, okay. and then once if that's approved, then if there's enough yes votes, then um, the challenge is to, you know, to get everyone to vote, um, but we can work on that. Um, I think that's doable that we have enough um, votes and, and then next time it won't be as hard anymore. Exactly. So Matt and Richard, the big summary is we're trying to make it easier and require fewer votes in order to get things done and, and move things along and publish stuff and 
create new GitHub repositories and, you know, just things like that. Um, things will still come to the PGB and need a full majority vote when it's, you know, something major that we're going to put our name on or commit to, but we want to unleash kind of the technical working groups to do stuff and, you know, you know, maybe they break something, but whatever. Yeah, no issue. No, yeah, I'm I'm all for efficiency. So yeah, put me in. Um, you know, that's all I can think of. Um, you know, we've talked about it on the last multiple PGB calls, but working on um, putting together, we need to, like a, a, a tiger team meeting to come up with a roadmap and like really put some vision on the wall of how we could stitch things together. And I think then taking that back to our respective organizations and, you know, saying, Hey, look, here's the meat on the bone for us to continue to do this and really get something out of OCA, like frankly is missing. And, you know, it is, that's what it is. I mean, yep. um, you know, putting their fair share in. Uh, but if we don't use their stuff and help improve their stuff, then who is the like, they you were saying? Who did you say? I said IBM has been oh, IBM. Okay. Fair I didn't share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. With yeah. with Kestrel and Stick Shifter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think if you look at those as an example, open projects that your respective organizations are doing today could be brought to the OCA. I think Claudia, one thing like I've brought this up inside MACV when I was there and now inside Tinder. And, you know, the fear is like, am I giving up control of our open project, you know, for things that each of our, you know, Rapid7 has a ton of stuff out in the open. SAIC has a bunch of tools and stuff out there um, and things that y'all use and we do as well. But why do I want to put my project under Oasis? um you know and what's the downside what's the upside mm -hmm. uh on that like am i giving up control can i always just fork this thing and pull it back if it i don't if it's not working out like these things if i don't fully understand them frankly mm -hmm. um, how, how will and, they right yeah <laughs> yeah and so i i can't sell anybody on it um and if i can't then i sure our members you know richard and matt like you guys probably would no, same. as well. Mm -hmm. Same. I think um, we, should, we need we need kind of the. I I've done it in the past where I did sort of an OCA overview internally, but it wasn't it wasn't actionable enough. Like we and it, just some timing things that might help if it was relatively imminent. Where because we have a new chief scientist and he's trying to sort out, you know, the kind of the chief scientist world of which he's aware of of OCA, but that's about it. So it's, it, it, it would be so good we, to have a pitch yeah. essentially, but a, a, a strong, like an actionable pitch, like so, here are three things that we think, you know, and I can help steer the, the three things that rapid seven should be involved in or whatever, you know, just very, very tangible. So they can go, aha, yes or no. Yeah. As opposed to like OCA is this beautiful place where openness will happen blossom and they're like what i don't know yeah. there's know, roses too, and skittles everywhere yeah, it's too abstract <laughs> so but these are two different things right just to like for me to understand like the ask or or um um what we're talking about right one i think if i if i understood that correctly just to clarify um Mark, you were saying there's like a fear that people will lose control over their own projects, right? And 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 Matthew, who you were saying it's you it's not clear like what can OCA deliver to uh Rapid Seven Yeah, instance. I don't think if we had fear, or, that would yeah. be a good step in the right <laughs> direction. We have sort well, of like la la land. Okay. Because and I'm trying like, to like uh, but are that's these open source projects like the, that's the question if the, if they're already open source yeah i mean i wouldn't like say the like the licenses are open source licenses I mean, um, are they likely to move metasploit no because it's just too established but mm. you know something else sure i mean that you know if they if they felt it was uh it could build momentum and there'd be a you know a collaboration that would not 
you know, that would allow competitors to collaborate on, on, you know, things. And, and, uh, and if there were initiatives that were complementary to our, you know, our product strategy, mm. I mean, those are the type of cells that I'd like to, you know, have and, or I can help contribute. Cause I know, I what, think, I know what should get traction here. I just, you know, the gap between OCA is this beautiful place where openness blossoms, which is too vague and abstract well, to yeah. initiatives and, we have and cross those two things over, then I can make a, you know, they, we can make a stronger sales pitch. That, that seems part. to me what Mark was saying, like there needs to be a tiger team meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you yeah. Know. Well, yeah. you've definitely got to come up with a what's in it for this, what's Absolutely. in it for us kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. And yeah. Um, also to that point, I think one of the things that you, you may want to have uh, written down and understood is, is, you know, what's the, what's the end state here? What's the golden ring we're trying to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and so if, if we have this grandiose vision of, you know, we'll push a button and, and all this software is going to go out Interconnect. and, and yeah, yeah. And, and, and this yeah. is what's going to happen. Well, what is this? What is this thing we're yeah, going yeah. after? Totally. Um, we've got to get that message across. So we tell people about this utopia. And then <laughs> when we're talking about all of these, um, components as mark was describing earlier that we're trying to link together we have a a story to tell that says well this part is going to take care of this piece of this utopia and this piece and this piece and this piece and it helps kind of put together that architecture so you understand and there, the are, there are elements of that like there didn't, didn't duncan just did a video sort of laying out mm. i think he passed it around i think it was him that he sort of showed the pieces of 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 uh yeah he did it with his his uh open his uh event proposal when he sent out a mm -hmm. note that he couldn't be here mm -hmm. um and i sent that around you know i sent th that's the type of thing that is essentially a pitch for kind of a pitch for oca um uh, mm -hmm. let me ask you this then because this doesn't just happen right and and no. you folks and the tsc uh members would be i guess from my perspective the right people to you know, we can help with outreach and marketing yeah. and maybe yeah. also um, putting it into nice words or whatever. Um, but like the the overall vision goals yeah. and what's in, in it for who, el who else wants to right. join. Um, I think that you are the domain experts, right? So you know, you know, the market, I mean, D knew the market, D is unfortunately not yeah, the yeah. oasis anymore. Well, it becomes like 2023 planning. That's usually when right. you like, want yeah. to try to get everyone and, together and, so and say, well, I'm, it's the new year. Let's I'm put wondering a plan. if, if, you know, I don't know. I, I know everyone hates that, but I like, I, I have the impression that, you know, you know, we need to have like a meeting with like whoever wants to be involved in this from the TSC PGB side, like work do a one hour workshop or whatever mm. i don't know i'm mm -hmm. happy to facilitate that um that's what i can offer um because uh, yeah i don't know like we've been saying we've been talking about this for quite a while and i know there's been like people you know lots of people don't uh, uh contributed to blog posts and stuff but um the the overall picture like like the or the one pitch like the the I don't know the elevator pitch or whatever mm. or more than that actually I think mm -hmm. we need more than that right because we have that down the elevator pitch I guess but I well, don't know well, do are people well, willing to I have put is, in is, that time or not sorry Matthew yeah I'm, just think think of every transition between security control X and Y you know and in, in our world it's event sources and and SOAR integrations and you know the a lot of the engineers here, I expect your organization, are just so used to grinding away at custom things. They don't even know that there's a better possibility. They, you know, they, I, I, the first thing I did in this world was SAML. And I was sort of like, I didn't really understand what I was doing when I started doing it either. And then I realized, oh my God, we just opened up federated single sign-on to the world. It's like, I did something useful. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. Like, I didn't know that it was going to be important until we did it. And so it's sort of like helping, and obviously the, the, our chief scientist is more attuned to bigger picture things than the engineers that are maybe grinding out integrations between two products. But that's the kind of selling that we need, you know, that I need help doing internally to see that there's, you know, 
the old way of grinding out one-to-one -one integrations is not scalable and it's it's expensive and takes a lot of work and it's not it's not our competitive differentiation it's more of a you know keeping the lights on and everyone has to do it so we're all like spending money on these custom integrations that don't really they're not innovation you know they're they're um you know necessary but not sufficient for they're solving innovation. the problem at hand yeah and then you know, we have to do it until there's an yeah. alternative and what we're right. here to do is like make an alternative so that we don't have to do custom integrations as much as mm -hmm. we currently have to do and um yeah and those things need to be more tangible it can't be like wouldn't it be nice if there's a world where there's no custom integrations because people are like i don't know you know it has to be very very you know pitch specific per organization because not everything the rapid seven are probably interested in your organizations but we should each be able to hone our internal pitches but still drawing from the same shared open open community um, project you know list of things hope that made some sense no totally uh, i'm just you know i'm thinking that like we can define a reference architecture and that's what these working groups are doing yep, yep. and we can say hey you know chief scientist guys like hey do you want to participate in this and they're like you know no <laughs> like yeah but, but that's uh, but then that's an answer that's a crisp you know you, you we could circle the the interface and go rapid seven question mark yeah you should it's relevant to us you know it, but that's a very tangible request that can be made Right. Um, as, as opposed to sort of a generic openness request, which is too generic. So may, maybe that's a maybe that's an approach is come up with, a, you know, the Uber reference architecture and then plug in the vendors that play in yeah. those in those domains you know, on either side of the that. Integration. I think that's that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. You know, to a certain extent with mm -hmm. our puzzle pieces. Yep. Um, I think as a recruiting and a pitch like you know, working with you, for example, on like, where, where are these other rapid seven open projects? And, but I think backing up, I've been trying to think of an incremental step for us to do to move towards that. And, and what could OCA be? Let's assume like nobody participated. What could we do agnostic of others participation that's fruitful and, and something what does that, that mean? We, is so, it, that I, seems circular I, to me. No participation, yeah. you can't do anything. Well, some of us are participating. Okay. Like with the participation that we have, like yeah. what, what do we, as like the leadership of this thing, do in the absence of getting these other people that are doing yeah. things with the pieces of the puzzle we don't sure. have? Um, I was wondering if if OCA could become a centralized repository of formats, of schema and definitions of you know, different vendors, solutions, event IDs and taxonomies and kind of, you know, the, the library of well, I mean, that's, if I understand what you're saying, that, that, I mean, my deepest experiences with SAML, that is what happened. We all contribute our XML interfaces, integrity at the mm -hmm. time. And I guess RSA was probably the other one. Anyway, and it was like, we think this should be the standard. And it, neither of them were. But it evolved into SAML and in a collaborative way. So we started off with our like custom, inter, you know, our custom proposals, and then yeah. it was thrown thrown into a, a working group bucket, and then the working groups of which was made up largely of the contributors of those, you know, those schemas and those um, interfaces, you know, whatever they battled it out and got to some shared, you know, shared understanding. Which I assume was better than probably both contributions. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I mean, but I, I, yeah, I assume you don't mean like a place where people can like GitHub. No, and code not, and not even no not oversight even, or just pointing to their open thing, yeah. pointing to their schema, pointing to their API documentation, pointing to their thing. Yeah. As but a starting like, place for right. an initiative. Yeah, I assume that's that's what. what and I think that do. the realistic goal is defining glue and mappings and adapters and connectors and things that stitch the heterogeneous, you know, ecosystem that it, it will always be like, there's always going to be different things. I mean, that's just, that's, that's what I'm thinking we solve for 
um, rather than coming to agreement on a single standard. I think standards are going to come out in yeah. different subdomains of the space, um, you know, for an yeah, indicator I mean, of behavior or for this or that thing, but. Probably depends on the domain, but I mean, again, drawing on the SAML experience, we had, we had a way of doing federation between separate security domains preceding the standard. And right. then we bend, we bend it once the standard exists. You know, once the standard was was deployed, we're like, yeah, we don't want to do that custom thing anymore. So I mean, it, you know, maybe that was such a narrow use case that people didn't have to maintain their their custom way anymore. But that ultimately was what what happened. And and I, I, whether you have a translator layer between everyone's proprietary stuff, or whether you have a actual standard that that everyone just adopts, or you have you know it evolves into into the standard, I get, you know, the TBD, but at the end of the day, you have, if, if you do interchange via standard, or you do interchange via a broker, you know, yeah, that's sort of up to the, the details of the working group to figure out what approach makes more sense. Um, yep. But just the collaboration on the common exchange and integration is, is where a lot of the benefit comes out. So what would it take to get that started? Well, I mean, which part the, for, you know, getting people to collaborate and. Well, you know, to, like what you were talking about, creating the, the index, kind of an yeah. index of yeah. known open cybersecurity projects yeah. and related things. And, and, um, and interfaces that need them, maybe if they don't exist, but. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe I, mean, the... I think it'd be it could be pretty simple. Um, I would go how to start it specifically. I would go ask some guys. You know, perhaps like, you know, I know Oliver Rockford, Anton Chabaka, and like those guys. They did the uh, it's called the demo forum, and they got you know very effectively got you know hundreds of vendors to come and publish their short little demo videos. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe collaborating with talking to some of our friends at MITRE and, you know, um, CSA and some of these other communities, I think, you know, and, and like maybe that could be OCA's function. Like that's what Oasis is different than all the others in that it is a, you know, really true standards organization and owning you know, potentially owning this, you know, true open cybersecurity kind of index of things. And then maybe the job of the TSC and the PGB, maybe our goal becomes, you know, stitching these things together and making recommendations and working towards standards where there's overlap and redundancy. And, and you know, like we get a clearer picture that way, but maybe the first step is, I don't know, I think it, it might, need to start marketing frankly <laughs> it might that might be kind of what it is at first in order to get people to participate is hey you know post about your open cyber security project or thing here and oca becomes you know we have some part of our website that points to these things and maybe we vet them you know but there's a bunch of projects out there that we could start to stitch together um well, then the other maybe maybe as we're heading is is like the the OCSF. One of the things that it would be valuable from my point of view is if it became, if it became the home, if yeah, if OCA became yeah, the home per, of that's that. That's a perfect example. Yeah, and that that would have a double positive whammy because we're we're developing against it. Yeah. And, so this and, goes all the way back, Claudia, to maybe something actionable, which is like kind of the original prompt, like. How do we, I, I would like, you know, from Oasis perspective, you know, being the experts on this, like what, what's the downside for an organization to put their open projects under the OCA umbrella and GitHub repositories, you know, more tangibly. And Xiao Kui, hey buddy, uh, you might have an opinion on this as well. Like, um, we all have open projects. You know, so far only IBM has put their open projects there. Like, how do we articulate back to our organizations why it is a good thing to put your open project here? And short of that, 
is there maybe room for a strategy to get people to point to their open projects outside of the OCA, like where they exist on GitHub already, they're already in their repositories, rather than forking them and moving them and putting them under the OCA GitHub, can we point to things and have other organizations voluntarily say, hey, yes, OCA, we want you to point to our project and have, you know, a, a list of, you know, friends of OCA, something, I mean, things like MIST, things like Zeek, things like, you know, Suricata, the Sigma community, like all these other communities, can we map to those things back, you know, to OCA and have a lighter weight participation than moving your entire project under our data? I think that is a barrier. Mm -hmm. um, I need to take that back to chat Carol and I guess Jamie as well because yeah, APR yeah. Are maybe stuff. So I, I I don't have an answer now. Yeah, but I don't, it's obviously. a really good question, and I I've I've have taken some notes, and we have this recording, so I will take that up as an action item. And Sorry, maybe... it took me like 20 minutes to figure out that question. It's okay. <laughs> but sometimes you need to talk about things to know what you want to say. It's okay. I don't mind that. It's good. It's good to have that discussion, right? Um, I think that's very, for me, it's very enlightening and useful. So, Yeah, I and I fully agree with Mark um, about the connections. Um, and the, the three most important OCA projects are currently doing that. Um, so for example, um, for Castro, um, we are starting to use data from securedataset.com, which is primarily used by a very famous hunting project called the hunting project in GitHub. That I think the most famous threat hunting, cyber threat hunting project on GitHub, and they have their name um, associated with securitiesdataset.com. Um, the plan of Castro is to get a tight connection um, with securitiesdataset.com and then so that we can have our name, Castro, and the link in their website. So that is one of the things that we are currently doing um, inside Castro. And uh, other possible connections, um, we started about uh, connecting um, with Sigma. And we have some preliminary things like uh, Sigma as uh, Castro Analytics, some of the rules we have. Um, we are also going to further develop that. And then maybe have some more systematic way to connect to Sigma so that we can talk to them um, and uh, have the links on both sides um, to let people to to get people aware of the, of the, the uh, project on both sides when people go from one side to another. And another example is OpenSea2 um, that's in the last couple of weeks and months since uh, um, the uh, automation workshop, cybersecurity automation workshop, we have a very good collaboration with within OCA such as Pace and Castro and, and all sides such as OpenSea2. And um, Castro will be written in kind of one of the standards OpenSea2 profile um, in, in investigation um, action. So that will make some links um, from the OpenSea2 side to Castro. And we already have some links from um, Kakao um, playbooks um, to Castro, and they will um, further formalize it um, as a Castro um, kind of uh, handbooks in Kakao. So those are the examples that we're trying to strengthen, trying to get further. And um, from TSC perspective, I can also see that um, PACE is a very, very good example that we can push further on this side because it naturally connects a lot of things such as OpenSea2, SBOM and things so that um, I, I think we should always start from a technical point of view. Um, um, we cannot just connect without any um, solid reason. So when we have a very solid reason from technical point of view, this is good connections and uh, why giving Castro links 
in uh, external maybe project websites um, will make them more attractive and make people um, get it, maybe use the both things better. And from this side, we can think about how can we um, communicate with them? And uh, maybe we first have some technical assets. Um, maybe first we have some meetings with people there um, to better understand the needs from both sides and how to do things. Uh, that, that's, that's my comments, yeah. Yeah, I think that's great feedback, Shakwe. I think, um, yeah, I totally agree that it should be engineering led. Like we don't want to throw stuff against the wall. And, uh, although sometimes I think, you know, the Apollo 13 analogy comes to mind where it, it is, there's is some benefit maybe like one thing we were talking about before you joined the call is getting our organizations, getting the chief scientists that uh, we have connections to. You know, I could get Matthias and, Richard could get some folks from SAIC and Matt from Rapid7 and so on and putting together some sort of meeting because I think there are a bunch of other open projects um, that everybody's doing that, you know, um, if, if we could identify benefit to them, then, you know, getting them to participate more in OCA, like that's the goal, you know, so part of it is, you know, I know you're a builder, so like, you know, you, to have this perspective, but I think the other part is trying to, how do we continue to keep this thing alive and get more participation? And in order to do that, identifying proactively something that could be done with X organizations, open project that's out there in the world by itself, like, and pulling them in, um, figuring out a mechanism to do that would, you know, be I like good. Your, I like your... I think your your idea of the chief scientist workshop, you yeah, know, an OCA facilitated. I'm trying to figure out who would facilitate and exactly what, but but it but it be it would be something that they could be invited to, and they should come with, you know, their vision of um, a security uh, layer or platform or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, from the perspective of their respective vendors, but you know, come into a forum and present you know, and, and collaborate with their counterparts and then see if there's a way that that could be distilled into, mapped into the OCA kind of um, framework. And then, you know, hopefully that brings them all forward to say, hey, this is a place where we could actually make motions, make steps towards, you know, because I bet our visions aren't that different in many ways because we're all yeah. sort of operating in the same security operation that's part world. of the hard part is, yeah you know and to a certain extent everybody's building the same thing yeah with and, different different pieces right um, and that's and then that and the point is is that you know there won't ever be a platform to rule them all and so by definition these platforms or sub platforms will have to interoperate more often than they won't and thus yeah, and we'll, we'll, right now we do custom integrations between IT and security systems for various purposes. But what if we didn't have to do that, you know, more often? Yeah. And, um, you know, the, the, I mean, I, it's, I realize it's apple pie and motherhood, but it's like, and the, and the pie will be bigger and there'll be more money to spend on innovation as opposed to the grind it out, you know, annoyingly maintain hard to maintain integrations that we all have to spend so much money on that's no one yeah. really wants to work on <laughs> i mean every participant if to make that a reality has to you know potentially cannibalize something and as we democratize certain functions or capabilities you know into the open um, and that's why i think the chief scientist angle because those people tend to be you know, they're not worried about driving the order. Yeah, they're not, yeah. you know, they, they tend to have a, the bigger vision. So may, maybe that's a way we could think about the, P, the PVP or a, a set of OCA people could be the facilitators of a chief scientist workshop. And we all try to encourage our, get our chief scientists and their whatever team to come on. I like that. That's idea. a tangible ask. I mean, I can go around and say, hey, on in three weeks, there's going to be this thing, and here's what the agenda is, and you're invited. And we, I definitely think you should participate. And then it's hard. To, I don't think they'd say no. They, you know, whether our chief scientist shows up or, or, or one of his staff members, whatever, you know, but it, I don't think you'd say no to that. I really don't. 
because they'll just be like interested that, to see. Yeah. And then it's like uh, the Open you know, Cybersecurity World Congress or something. <laughs> yeah. Maybe not quite that grandiose, but, <laughs> title, but yeah. I mean, I, I'm sure like we Jane can help if that either if that's an online yeah. meeting or an in person meeting, actually, right? So you know, um, you know, Jason did a remember you sent around a video of him presenting at some conference. Did you and he was sort of, it wasn't an OCA thing, but he used the OCA framework and part of it. It's sort of like, you know, it'd be interesting whether if he could present like the OCA view, obviously a very uh, vendor agnostic and whatever, and just show, showing product category interfaces and existing standards and standards that are, or specifications that are in work and whatever, the state of play basically, and then invite the, chief scientists to then react to that and maybe maybe even some of them present their vision um you know as part of it you know, some sort of design of a workshop like that i could see maybe maybe being beneficial yeah well i think we should bring that back up maybe in marketing to lead yeah. that um yep. and i know we've got some budget but i think you know, being very be, restrictive, like virtual. people like yeah. Xiao Kuei and my buddy Matthias and, and, you know, Jason and keeping it like very tech, senior technical, yeah. you know, meeting in the mind. I think you'll get participation if it gets muddy with, you know, marketing and any Great. sales stuff, like it's going to yeah. be a small kind of thing. Um, it's certainly the members. <laughs> The question is non-members, maybe. I, I think maybe definitely non-members. I don't think yeah. we're not paying for everybody, you know, like maybe we could pay for the conference facility. Well, I was um, thinking maybe this is even just remote. I don't know. But if it could be in person, fantastic, you know, but if we don't think remote we is definitely out, easier. For sure. It, I, I mean, in person is probably most uh most hard <laughs> will, uh, will work if if it's like attached to black hat or something yeah. like that where everyone is anyway and you have like an extra workshop room for a half a day or something Just like so that makes the, the complexity goes up exactly and and remote is probably the easiest because then people can slot it in somehow yeah yeah and, and, and it's hard. the way to fill the funnel for the in-person event as well um yeah and see if we can build momentum maybe you know start yeah. with something you know, maybe a, a, call it a two-hour workshop or something substantive, but not all day, of course. And then the incentive would be that the chief scientists would have some of their extended team there anyway, you know, in a virtual. And then, you know, kind of just let, you know, I, it's hard to say what would be the next steps, but that should be the final conversation of the workshop. What are the next steps here? You know, and see what people say. Maybe, they, maybe they'll say, let's. Yeah. This is awesome. We should meet in person. I don't know, but it feels like okay. a path that so, would be. So how how do we make this happen? Because this seems like a really good idea, and it needs a bit of prep time, and it will probably happen in the Q one because yeah. now like the holidays are coming right. up, and everyone is busy anyway with end of year stuff. I, yeah. I assume. Yeah, it'd be time yeah. you'd want to give a six to eight week lead time. I, I think Q1 is a good time frame. And um, um, sh should we get any experience from um, the cybersecurity automation workshop, how it's organized and uh, how things um, happen there? I think that may be a good example um, yeah. that here that we also want to invite people outside OSA um, to come and to see that. But first time, I totally agree that we may do it virtually for the first time and then to see how people uh how, how people want to do next yeah yeah and, and we also i mean we would need to start why don't we create a shared doc that's just like a, a strategy doc you know we'll share with the pgb and Chalkway and slowly expand the circle but like let's define what the agenda would be we've got to have a very short pitch and then some organized you know something to like what's our ask like and then <laughs> figure out how to structure it i mean if we want to get that kind of group of people together to think about how to solve a problem we need to think about how to get their 
thoughts and, and collect that. It's not going to happen in a one hour meeting. Um, so maybe like it's, you know, a few workshops or some breakouts on, you know, and I'm kind of thinking out loud here, maybe for you, Shockway, but like, how do we structure some of the, um, I mean, related and then other TSC kind of other working groups that could exist maybe, or uh, kind of pieces of the puzzle that aren't filled in yet, where it could be a project that, I don't know, we have to think about it, but. And maybe something could be circulated, and but also try to set up a PGP slash marketing. I mean, not many people show up to the marketing anyway, but you know, maybe a combined session specifically focused on this workshop. Yeah, for sure. And, and okay. go ahead. I think that's the good next step, Claudia, yeah. is why don't we just have like two wants to participate in moving this forward and further defining it. Okay. So who's like I can set I can I can start a Google Doc yeah. <laughs> with yeah. like a headline and then yeah. the title and then share it with everyone. Yeah. And um I don't know, and you you just uh, add add because you you know. I'll, I'll jump in and define yeah. kind of a few awesome. things I think we should do. Okay. Yeah, I'll do the same. Yeah. Yeah, and I will add some of the potential um, group um, or mm -hmm. people we may invite um, mm -hmm. outside OCA, for example, yeah. from mm -hmm. other OCA's um, groups that I think maybe mm -hmm. quite should be connected. Yeah. Okay. And we probably should think about what a max like of, of, of the active participants would be like, I don't know if it's 20, but you know, it's something, it's not a hundred. It's mm -hmm. like, you know. So what do you want to call this thing just as a working title? So, so. What did you say? The, the World Congress for Slam <laughs> <Yeah>. all security, <laughs> uh, interoperability problems. That have ever I don't know. We have, to think of, <laughs> we have to think of something stealthier at this stage. <laughs> Uh, well, I could just name it Chief Scientist Workshop or... Yeah, that's probably... Good I don't know I'm if it needs like, to be know, meaningful enough so you know what what this is about. It's the cybersecurity, you know, Illuminati. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. I like that. Or we used to, yeah. in the Denny world, the Adenterati. We used to refer to the Adenterati. Yeah, I mean, if we're going to go little form elitist. of a whole bunch of chief scientists it's gonna like it needs to be very structured <laughs> yeah yeah well, maybe we can call it the chief scientist illuminati meeting for now yeah. but change it later <laughs> uh, phds only <laughs> mm. that means i can't attend sorry <laughs> yeah i don't plan on it I, I want them to think that they're you know in their <laughs> special world no i would definitely want to attend so we get more done PhD. All right, cool. All right. All right. Um, it's progress. Claudia, I'll, I'll follow up with you, Claudia, on a couple things. Or actually, I'll put them in that doc. Um, go from there. Okay. We'll look for it. And then okay, we'll, cool. we'll get back together. Thanks, everybody. That was a productive yeah. call. Thank you, everyone. See you. Ciao. Yeah, bye. Bye. Bye.